more often than not, in chemistry, we are going to be measuring things with instruments. Those instruments have, have different levels of precision. They'll go to different levels of, uh, uh, of magnitude, whether that is to the ones place, or to the tenth place, or to the hundredth place, or to the thousandth place. How many digits do we record? Well, we have to record as far as the instrument tells us. Those digits are called significant digits. And that's what we're going to focus on in this lesson. What limits how accurately you can measure the stuff in chemistry? Well, it's, it's the accuracy and the precision of your instrument. There will always be a certain amount of uncertainty. The, 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 the instrument can only go so far. How we record this is very important. For example, look at this ruler. Definitely, we would have to say that this goes, this uh, this wire is at least three centimeters. Well, are there increments within the ones place? Yes, we can see the increments. We can see them right here. One, two, three, four. And it looks like this wire is just beyond that one place. So it's definitely 3.1. Okay. 3 and 3.1 are numbers that we are absolutely certain of. Now, how far beyond 3.1 is it? We don't know. But in chemistry, we are allowed to take one guess. Just one. One digit that you are uncertain of. I would say it's 3.13. Some people may disagree with me. That's okay. How about this rule? Definitely 2. Maybe 2.5. How about 2.50? Is it right on the line or is it a little bit of beyond the line? I think it's a little bit beyond the line. I think that this, uh, this nail is just a little bit beyond that line. Well, that's open to interpretation. That's okay. How about this thermometer? Well, this thermometer is perhaps not as precise an instrument. We get the ones place, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so it's definitely beyond five. Is it quite to the six? Uh, I don't think so, but pretty close. What do you think it is? How about 5.8? 5.9? Well, in chemistry, we are allowed to record all the digits that we're absolutely sure of plus one digit that we're uncertain. We call that, those, significant digits or significant figures. In my class, we'll always call them significant dig digs, or sig digs or significant digits. You'll find that in other classes, they might call them sig figs. Sometimes difficult to figure out how many digits are measured in a recorded amount and how many are simply placeholders. For example, Let's say we have a number like 59.0 in grams. And you're working for a boss that likes to have all units standardized to kilograms. Uh, no, to milligrams. So what do we do? Well, obviously a milligram, uh, no, I was right in the first place, kilograms. Obviously a kilogram is much larger in magnitude. There are many, many uh, grams in a kilogram. So, um, actually there are a thousand grams in a kilogram. So in order to figure this out, we have to move the decimal place three places over. So how do we record this? Like this. These are the numbers that we've measured. This number we were sure of, this number we were sure of, and then that was an uncertainty. We're not sure. Uh, the device can measure uh, to the one, to the tens and to the ones, but it allows you to estimate into the tens. So all of these are considered to be significant digits. But if you record this observation like this, then how many zeros are in there? That's confusing. So usually what we do is we place a zero there as a placeholder. In this case, was the zero measured? No. What is the purpose of the zero? The purpose of the zero is quite simply to let us know 
that we are dealing with a number that is in the 10,000s range. Is that right? Yeah, 10,000s range. 10,000s range. All right, so what if we have a number that's like this? 595 grams, and now we need to convert. Uh, let me put a kilogram back up there. Now we need to convert to milligrams. Well, there are 1,000 milligrams in a gram. So this is like moving the decimal place three places over. Okay, 595 was our uh, measurement. The 590 we were sure about, and we were guessing that it was 595. Could have been 594, could have been 593. It was a guess. So all of these are considered to be significant digits. In order to fix this, we're going to have to add three more zeros. Did we measure those zeros? Are these zeros measured? No, they are not. Therefore, they are just placeholders. They are considered to be insignificant digits. They are placeholders. So there are two occasions in which a number is not considered to be significant digit, both involving zeros. When we're dealing with a fraction, this is a fraction, and that fraction is begun with a zero, and when we're dealing with a large number, something to the tens, or hundreds, or thousands, with zeros following it. Okay? Let me erase this. So you can see all non-zero numbers are significant, period. Zeros preceding the first non-zero numbers are not significant. They're just placeholders. Right here. Right here. Zeros following integers without decimals they are just placeholders. Right here, right here, right here. These. Now, what if you see a decimal there? If you see a decimal there, that is telling you that those zeros were measured. Without the decimal, right here, that's like going into a room, observing the crowd, and saying, there must be like a thousand people in this room. Well, are there a thousand people? Maybe. Could there also be 998? Yes. If it's 998, guess what? Even that one is uncertain. So yes, this number has only one digit, and even and that itself is uncertain, and that is that one. So a thousand only has one digit. But what if you actually stood at the door and counted as the people as they came in? What you're going to find is that you would need to place a period there in order to communicate to people that you are dealing with exactly 1,000 and that those zeros are not just placeholders, they were also measured. All right, so let's see how we do. 25, no zeros, no problems. Remember, zeros are the only ones that could potentially not be counted. 246.31, no zeros, no problems. One, two, three, four, five. 409, we have a zero, we have a potential problem. Is this one of those cases where there are zeros beginning a fraction? No, this is not a fraction. This is one of those cases where it's a large number and it ends with zeros. No, this is not the case. So any zero between real numbers are counted. 20.06, any zeros between real numbers are counted. Four. Now, a lot of people would say, well, Mr. Marino, this is a fraction. Well, no, it, the whole number is not a fraction. The number contains a fraction, but the whole number is not a fraction. Just remember, any zeros between numbers have been measured. Count them. They're not placeholders. 29.200. Ah, so we have some zeros here, and they're finishing off a number, but wait. Are they finishing up a large number? No. This is part of a fraction. What you want to think about is, what is the purpose of those zeros? Are they really needed as placeholders? No. The only reason why you would add zeros after numbers in a fraction would be to try to communicate that, in this case, this instrument can measure to the thousands place. 
thousandths place. So, one, two, three, those zeros are good zeros, four, five. 1.050, zero, zero between real zeros, count them, one, two, three, and a zero following numbers, their whole purpose is to tell you that this device can measure that far. That is good reason to keep them as a significant digit. Point one two, don't worry about it. Two. All right, now, is this number a fraction? Yes, it is 30 one hundredths. No, is it 30 one hundredths? No, 30 one thousandths. 30 one thousandths. Okay, is this zero needed if you're going to change it into a fraction? No, that zero is not needed. That zero is a placeholder, therefore, it is not counted as a significant digit. Is this zero needed? Yes. There's a big difference between 3 1,000 and 30 1,000. That zero is needed. Any zeros in a decimal that's, that's, uh, that's following real numbers are significant. So, 1, 2, 100. All right. So, you go into a room and say, hey, there must be like 100 people in this room. Are you sure it's 100? Could it be 105? Yeah. Could it be 98? Yeah. Okay, so you're not even sure that that one is correct. You're allowed one digit. You're allowed to record one digit that you're not sure of. And that digit is it. These are just placeholders so that you know you're dealing with a number that's in the hundreds and not in the tens. So it's one. And what happens if you want to tell somebody that indeed, indeed, I have counted there are exactly 100 people. Then you place a decimal there that makes these zeros to be counted, and we have three significant digits. All right, so what happens if you're dealing with these numbers? You have to uh, subtract them or add them. Well, this should, for subtracting and addition, it makes sense. Let's look at this now. Let's say that you have a measurement using a device that can only measure to the tenths place. And by that I mean it allows you to estimate into the tenths place. And then your buddy uses an instrument that his instrument can estimate into the hundredths place. And then you decide, hey, let's add our measurements together. Well, you use a calculator. The calculator doesn't care. What does the calculator assume is this number. It assumes that it's a zero. But wait, you don't even know if that number is a three. That's an estimate, let alone this number, and yet the calculator will assume it's a zero. So it'll say five, it'll say six, and 17. Well, what's wrong with this? You're not sure of this. You're not even sure of this. You're allowed one uncertain figure. That's got to be it. What happens if the number that's right next to it is uh, 5 or above? You round up. 17.7. If it's 4 or below, then you round down. So, your final answer when you're dealing with measurements should reflect your least precise instrument. In this case, an instrument that can only measure to the tenths place. What about if you're multiplying or dividing? The concept is there. Uh, but what you do is a little different. Here, if you're adding and subtracting, you went with the lowest decimal place. If, in, if you're multiplying or dividing, you go with the lowest number of significant digits. Don't quite know why, but it is what they do. So here, 2.3, two significant digits. 3.05, three significant digits. 7.015 is what the calculator will tell you. Never, 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 never believe the calculator. The calculator doesn't care about significant digits. Ignore the calculator. Go back. Two significant digits. Your final answer should be in two significant digits. Look to the number on the right. That number is below four. Four or below. So round down. 7.0 is your final.